I was struck by uh, when Fergal was talking there about uh, the whole business of De Valera and what a terrible legacy um, we were left with as a result of his rural bias. Um, I think it's very interesting to point out that long before the Planning Act, the first Planning Act uh, was adopted in Ireland, as he said, in 1934, even though it was a piece of meaningless legislation, um, there was quite a lot of planning done by the first government of the Free State. Uh, and I think that that must always be acknowledged. I mean, this government, uh, the Common Gael government, is generally recognised as or, or regarded as reactionary. But in fact, it was the heyday of urban planning in Dublin, certainly, where not only did they manage to uh, reinstate the GPO, the Four Courts and the Custom House, uh, but also to rebuild O'Connell Street in neoclassical style, to build the Merino housing estate, to lay out Griffith Avenue, uh, to publish the Dublin Civic Survey, uh, Abercrombie and Kelly's uh, work and so on. Um, and then what happened in 1932, Fianna Fáil got elected to government. Um, the Common Gael uh, uh, outgoing government handed over to them, which was a great thing to do. Uh, and then it was like as if Ireland had been taken over by its rural rump. That's really what happened. Uh, and even the huge housing programmes that were built in Dublin in the 1950s, in the 1930s even, and, and, and onwards, were basically um, the results of slum clearance, and they were basically anti-urban uh, in character, uh, to a very large extent, apart from the great blocks of flats that were done uh, in the city centre uh, by uh, Herbert Sims, uh, which um, really stands uh, enormously to the credit of Dublin Corporation. Uh, anyway, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't even 15 years old when the, when the real Planning Act came into force. The Local Government uh, Planning and Development Act of 1963 came into force in October uh, 1964. Um, so I don't think I even noticed uh, at the time uh, that it had happened. Um, but later on, uh, we got Plan Magazine um, every month and I became an avid reader of it I have to say um, and it was in Plan Magazine's heyday when um, you know Anshin McKeown was the the editor and publisher and it was just great stuff um, and he was a fantastic polemicist and a master of invective and he used to dish it out month after month in Plan Magazine uh, um, attacking all of the people who he regarded as being um, uh, worthy of attack, as it were. And it was not the type of stuff that you, that you get nowadays in, in trade or professional publications, um, uh, you know, commercially minded stuff, uh, you know, with all this kind of bland lifestyle features. And by the way, and, and other drivel, and by the way, I'm not exempting the Irish Times from that criticism either. Um, but it wasn't until I started working as a sub-editor in the Irish press in the 1970s uh, that I, I, and I was cycling home late at night in the early hours of the morning and if, to my family home, which my dad, uh, who's nearly 100 now, is still living in, I'm glad to say, um, where I grew up off Black Horse Avenue near the Phoenix Park in Dublin 7 and I realised that the city that I then knew quite well was being whittled away uh, week in, week out, uh, more or less, by neglect and worse, including and principally because of the depredations of, of property speculators and uh, Dublin Corporation's roads engineers. And on the basis that there was a story behind every hoarding, and there were an awful lot of derelict sites in, in Dublin at that stage, uh, so there were a lot of hoardings. Um, I started writing about it for the Irish Press uh, and the Evening Press and also later on for the Irish Times. Um, and when all of this started having a bit of an impact with the public, uh, Fergal McCabe of Gillen Macmillan Publishers got on to me and asked me to write a book. And I, I, I had never even thought about writing a book at that stage. Um, but uh, when I got stuck into it and produced uh, The Destruction of Dublin, which was written in a rage, I have to admit, uh, and my rage at the time, I was an angry young man in my mid-30s when it came out in 1985, 
Um, so you can guess I'm over 65 now. And I followed that up with another book called Saving the City and later on The Construction of Dublin uh, in 2000. Um, and uh, then later on, even later than that, in 2005, did uh, with James Nix, um, Chaos at the Crossroads, which basically documented uh, the environmental destruction of Ireland during the boom years. Um, and I know, I know it's not popular to say things like this to an audience of planners and would-be planners, um, but I never, I never really got the impression, travelling around this country, that we were living in any kind of a planned environment in any real way. I just don't see the evidence for it anywhere, to be honest. Um, or certainly, I would, have to, I would have to think really hard to come up with some good examples of, of, of a well-planned environment. I mean, even the Docklands area seems alien uh, to me. Um, and I think Fergal also mentioned this because it's true that what we do best in this country is making it up as we go along, which is the exact opposite of planning. Planning involves making hard choices. Making it up as you go along is a f our, our, our default position, uh, in effect. And, you know, to explain, Fergal tried to wrestle with this as well, but, you know, I think it was uh, this from Sean O'Leary's, Sean O'Leary's book, uh, A Sense of Place, A History of Irish Planning. And, you know, the quote in that from Patrick Lynch, the, the economist and, and professor of economics in this university, uh, in 1960, where he, he said, planning is unpopular in Ireland. Such are the unreasoning attitudes towards it that the term is often used as an emotive one, suggestive of voices sing, signalling the road to serfdom or speaking the foreign accent of social engineers. That is something that is buried in our psyche, really. Uh, and it's the kind of irrational thinking that has lived on in the warped view of reality that is promoted by the likes of Danny Healy Ray uh, and uh, Jim Connolly, uh, the founder and spokesman for the soi disant uh, Irish Rural Dwellers Association. Um, because for them, planning is essentially, um, it's, it's, it's anathema because it involves others making decisions about what you can or cannot do with your own land. You know, I mean, when you listen to Danny Healy Ray and his brother, and even his late father, you know, I mean, basically they don't want to have a planning system in Ireland. What they want is a system, or not a system at all, but a situation whereby everybody can build whatever they like, wherever they like. And that is pretty much uh, how it has turned out. Um, so. We've ended up with half a million houses dispersed all over the countryside. That's half a million houses, half a million septic tanks. Um, and that is completely unsustainable. And even in the development of Irish towns, um, you know, in the last uh, 20 or 30 years, um, I mean, if you were to take the case of Letterkenny in County Donegal, um, which has one coherent street. I'm not joking. One street that makes sense as a street. And the rest of it is, is just random development that has taken place in certain fields around the town and, and not in other fields. Um, it is a mess. And as I said in a debate on Highland Radio in Donegal, uh, I was on the phone from Dublin um, uh, with the mayor of Letterkenny, uh, I said, basically, you have to face up to the fact that the way Letterkenny has developed in the last 20 or 30 years, this is about 10 years ago, is as if God had vomited all over the landscape. <laughs> um, I think the biggest failure of planning in Ireland um, has been the relentless sprawl of Dublin and the dominance of Dublin. And we have to remember that Dublin now accounts for 40% of the population of the state 
and is suffering from severe congestion as a result of that fact. Whereas other places are disfavoured and uh, in the doldrums. Um, and this has happened despite the fact that there were strategic planning guidelines for the Greater Dublin area from 1999 that emphasised the singular importance uh, of, um, of consolidating the metropolitan area. In other words, not allowing it to sprawl all over Leinster and even into parts of Ulster, uh, such as Carrick and Cross, which is in County Monaghan, which is a suburb of Dublin now, uh, or Virginia in County Cavan, which is another suburb uh, of Dublin to a very large extent. These are places where people live, but they are driving to work every day uh, in large measure uh, to the greater Dublin area. And at the same time, you have got the phenomenon of the bungalow blitz, which is really, let's face it and be honest with ourselves, largely driven by farmers' determination to sell off half-acre sites to finance the college education of their kids and whatever. Um, and it's also been the prime cause for the demise uh, and uh, decay of Irish towns. And we need to start asking ourselves things like, what is, uh, how long is it going to take you know, to get an ambulance to some uh, far away, uh, remotely located house in the countryside when its occupant has a heart attack? How are we going to look after all of the people living in these, in these isolated houses uh, in all over the landscape of Ireland when they all get into their 70s, 80s and 90s? Um, and developing new housing in country towns, in the backland areas in particular, has long been an objective of planning policy in Ireland. But where is it? Where are the new streets that have resulted from this planning policy? They don't exist to a very large extent. Show me good backland developments, like for example the small scheme in Gorey in County Wexford, opposite the Catholic Church there, um, in the former, I think it was the CBS, um, the Christian Brothers had a house there, and the, it was the backland area of that house that was developed as a sheltered housing scheme for elderly people. And really, it had a transforming effect on their lives, because you're talking about people who had previously lived, you know, in remotely located houses in the middle of nowhere, uh, 15 or 20 miles from Wexford Town, or from Gorey even, um, who were now within walking distance of everything that they would need, whether it was the post office, you know, the local shop, uh, the pub to have a pint in in the evening or uh, mass in the church opposite and so on. Um, so consolidation of both the towns and the cities that we have uh, is a very important um, issue in relation to climate change because it reduces car dependency. I mean, like, do I need to spell all of this out? Um, cutting emissions from transport, uh, which are growing all the time and are back growing again now as the economy is, uh, is showing signs of recovery. Um, and for those who in the audience who believe, as economists tend to, uh, though I'm not saying necessarily planners do, uh, that the, the ecosphere is merely a division of the economy, you have to remember all the time that it is the other way around. The economy is a division of, of the ecosphere and not the other way around. So repopulating towns um, should be among the top priorities of the government. And so should, so for example, should doubling the size of Cork City's population uh, under the new national planning framework that Damien English uh, referred to earlier on. Um, but I'm very dubious about the possibility that Cork is going to be favoured uh, in the new, this new national planning framework because the political system that we have is so dysfunctional. Um, and there is, to me, you know, Leinster House reeks of systemic decay and there's no will to change it on the part of politicians uh, who are in possession of seats <coughs> in the Doyle Chamber. There is no will to turn the sham parliament that we have into a real one, um, with perhaps no more than 100 TDs, um, half of them, I think, 
elected from single seat constituencies and the other half chosen uh, from national lists. And then devolve substantial powers to the local authorities because all of what has happened in the last 50 years or so has gone, seen power go in the opposite direction, away from local authorities and into the hands of government. And the latest move was already referred to by uh, the Minister of State, um, the latest move by an already highly centralised uh, governmental system is a proposal by Simon Coveney that all planning applications for 100, uh, for housing estates consisting of 100 units or more uh, should be removed from local authorities and sent directly uh, to onboard Planola. Uh, this is another retrograde step that the Irish Planning Institute uh, has rightly uh, criticised. So, um, as for myself, even though I'm now officially retired uh, from the Irish Times, uh, I'm not, uh, needless to say, giving up. Um, someone said, I should say, quote, he hasn't gone away, you know, unquote. But I think Jerry Adams has a copyright on that. Um, so the one I prefer is from Samuel Beckett at the end of his novel, The Unnameable, where he wrote, you must go on. I can't go on. I'll go on. Thank you. <laughs>